Hello, everyone, and welcome to this writing lesson. We are going to start with capitalization rules. In English, there are many rules for using capital letters. Here are six important ones. First of all, the first word in a sentence should always be capitalized. For example, my neighbor is a mechanic. So the M here is capitalized. Rule number two, the pronoun I should always be capitalized. So anytime you write I, you should capitalize it. For example, my friends and I often study together. So you have the I capitalized. Rule number three, names of people and their titles should be capitalized. For example, King Abdullah II, President Putin, Professor um, Indiana Jones, so their titles and their names are all capitalized, but not a title without a name. So if you have a title that doesn't have a name, you don't need to capitalize it. For example, he's a king. So the king here is not capitalized. There is an exception, however. A title without a name is sometimes capitalized if it refers to a specific person. For example, the President of the United States had dinner with the Emperor of Japan. Rule number four, nationalities, languages, religions, and ethnic groups should all be capitalized, like Swedish, English, Spanish, Jewish, Christian, Asian, should all be capitalized. All right, now rule number five. Names of school courses with numbers should be capitalized. So psychology 101, that's a name of a course with number, so it should be capitalized. But don't capitalize school subjects except the names of nationalities, languages, religions, and college classes with numbers. So history, math, and physics don't need to be capitalized, but Russian history or history 101 or physics 352 should be capitalized. Rule number six, specific places you could find on a map should be capitalized, like um, the North Pole or South America or the Amazon River. These are specific places, again, on a map that should be capitalized. So let's talk about paragraphs. A paragraph is a group of related sentences about a single topic. The topic of a paragraph is one and only one idea. A paragraph has three main parts. The topic sentence, supporting sentences, and the concluding sentence. The first sentence in a paragraph is a sentence that names the topic and tells what the paragraph will explain about the topic. This sentence is called the topic sentence. The middle sentences in a paragraph are called the supporting sentences. Supporting sentences give examples or other details about the topic. And the last sentence in a paragraph is called the concluding sentence. A concluding sentence often repeats the topic sentence in different words or summarizes the main points. A paragraph is like a cheeseburger sandwich. Two pieces of bread, meaning the topic and concluding sentences, enclosing the filling, which are actually the supporting sentences. As you read the following model, please pause the video here, read this paragraph, identify the topic sentence, supporting sentences, and the conclusion sentence. After you finish reading, then you can play the video again. Okay, so let's talk about topic sentences a little more. The most important sentence in a paragraph is the topic sentence. It is called the topic sentence because it tells the reader what the topic of the paragraph is. In other words, it tells the reader what he or she is going to read about. The topic sentence is usually the first sentence in a paragraph. It is the top piece of bread in our paragraph, 
cheeseburger sandwich. The two parts of a topic sentence. A topic sentence has two parts. A topic and a controlling idea. The topic part names the topic. The controlling idea part tells what the paragraph will say about the topic. It tells the reader this paragraph will discuss these things and only these things about this topic. For example, the topic of the model paragraph uh, that you just read is flight attendants. What will the paragraph say about flight attendants? The controlling idea tells us they have three characteristics. The paragraph will not tell us about their uniforms, their training, or their duties. It will only discuss three characteristics that flight attendants have. Here are examples of other topic sentences. The topic in all three examples is the same, English. The controlling idea in each says something different about English. From the controlling ideas, you can imagine what the rest of the paragraph will say about English. Let's look at these. English is constantly adding new words. English borrows words from other languages. English is necessary for many different jobs. Usually, the topic comes first and the controlling idea comes second in the topic sentence. However, the controlling idea may come first. In the A sentences, the topic is first. Let's look at them. English borrows words from other languages. The topic again comes first, the controlling idea comes next. The other topic sentence, English is necessary for many different jobs. Again, the same thing. However, the controlling idea may come first. In the B sentences, the controlling idea is first. Take a look at these. Other languages give words to English. So the controlling idea comes first, the topic comes second. Another example, many different jobs require English. Again, the controlling idea is first and the topic is second. Now let's discuss supporting sentences. The middle sentences of a paragraph are the supporting sentences. Supporting sentences explain or prove the idea in the topic sentence. They are the filling in a paragraph sandwich. The supporting sentences are the biggest part of a paragraph, just as the filling is the biggest part of a sandwich. Remember, all the supporting sentences in a paragraph must be relevant. Relevant means directly related to the main idea. For example, if your paragraph is about your mother's good cooking, a sentence such as, my sister is also a good cook, is not relevant because the paragraph about is about your mother, not your sister. In addition, make sure the supporting sentences are linked to each other by using transition words. Now, here you have a list of some common transition words and phrases. Take a look at these. Now, to list or to show a sequence, you can say first, blah, 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 second, third, and finally. To add information, you can use and, in addition, also, and to. For showing examples, you can say, for example, like, or such as. For showing reasons, you can say because, due to, and for. To show results, you can say so. Therefore, as a result, for clarification, you can use I mean, in other words, and for contrast or differences, you can use but, however, although, and in contrast. And finally, let's look at the concluding sentence. Paragraphs that stand alone, that is, paragraphs that are not part of a longer composition, often have a concluding sentence at the end. A concluding sentence closes the paragraph so that the reader is not left expecting more. Sometimes a concluding sentence reminds the reader of the main point by restating the topic sentence in different words. 
Now look at this example. The topic sentence is, English is necessary for many different jobs. So the concluding sentence could be, many different jobs require English. Sometimes a concluding sentence summarizes the main points in a paragraph. Now look at this example. The topic sentence is, my best friend, Freddie, has three important qualities. So the concluding sentence could be, my best friend is fun to be with, reliable, and understanding. Now remember, do not introduce a new idea in your concluding sentence. Just review or repeat the ideas you have already discussed. Don't add anything new. So it would be wrong to say, also, flight attendants love to travel. It would also be wrong to say, in conclusion, I hope to become a flight attendant someday. Why? Because these are new ideas. So they would be wrong in a concluding sentence. Use a transition signal to tell your reader that this is the end of your paragraph. This chart lists several conclusion signals. Notice that there is always a comma after conclusion signals. Pause the video and look at all these conclusion signals.